Let me start. So basically, I thanks for everyone coming and listening to the talk. So uh, I'm, I'm Ian Zhang. I work for Cisco WebEx as Cloud Platform Architect. And today, uh, what we are going to talk is really put application NFA performance optimization intelligence actually into your cloud. And uh, so let's maybe get started. So what we believe actually now, not the cloud has to be the same. And as a private cloud vendor, so I work for Cisco WebEx, so we are not targeting for any public cloud type of setup. So, but that nature, so having an infrastructure which is flexible enough for us to config into different model is really very interesting and quite important for the private cloud type of setup. Because at the end, what we want to enable is our application, is, our, how, uh, is how, up, how our application will behave to empower our application at the end uh, to empower our business. So uh, this is actually, you know, then it give us a flexibility to actually fine tune the overall platform. And let's take a look at the agenda today. It's first, let's start from understand the uh, characteristic. When I say characteristic, it's really how your guest VM will behave under, the, under their projected workload. And the second, find the bottleneck. After they run all their workload uh, under, I mean, let's say their projected workload, and is there any limitation overall to kind of, you know, uh, not let them to go far beyond what they want to achieve. And second, to, uh, third, third one, tune the system. So fine tune all the system based on all the, I mean, Linux offered technicals. And at then integrate the fine tuning technologies into the cloud itself. This is uh, today's agenda. Let's maybe start from understand the VM or guest virtual machine characteristics. So we believe not, not every cloud has to behave the same. And when we offer something that's a shared resource, we cannot actually predict what kind of application will run here. For example, there, there might be Could someone please help the technical issue? So I suddenly lost the, the stuff. So Nick left. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Don't push. All right. Thank you. Got you. So when we offer something, I say a shared platform, we cannot actually predict what what kind of application will come here, and. Uh, for example, there might be some front-end applications, might be some back-end applications, might be some application built on Java, or might be some application, let's say the native applications. Some ap application may deal with the voice, some of them maybe deal with the, the video, right? Let's say a uh, Hadoop type of workload is really doing some big data uploading and transforming type of you know, services. And also there is application which is doing some real-time collaboration. And at, at the end, people talk about NFA. It's really some of the, I, I say the workload or the task heavily handle the packet versus consuming your resources here. So different application might have different nature. And uh, that's uh, really true. I, I, take, I, I put two pictures here. It's one is uh, voice. So from the traffic perspective, I think about, you know, the voice traffic is really very smooth. And uh, I mean, it's very job sensitive, right? We cannot let our ears to think out, all right, this is, there is a job inside this application. I can figure out it's really bad for any of the voice type of applications and delay sensitive. So it's always UDP priorities. And take a look at the data traffic. Almost you know, every of the application deal with the data. Is, I mean, data go is very smooth, but sometimes it's really burst, right? So when, the, when their workload coming, so you cannot actually predict how much, how much traffic they are, they are going to handle. Well, they are going to handle. And um, from the job perspective, so package job, incentive, right? I mean, the TCP could handle that. And delay also incentive. So with the nature of TCP retransits. So basically, understand the application nature is really very important for a private cloud, especially like Cisco WebEx. And uh, let's take a look at this, this two picture actually capture the, I mean, the, from the application perspective. We, I mean, 
if you are lucky enough, you always could find some team which is really very happy to do the performance evaluation on top of your platform, which is really eager to learn or eager to find out what's bottleneck in their world and ready to handle all those performance shortage. And if you find those, those teams, then probably you are very lucky to have a good partner. So those two pictures shows one, one of them is a CPU memory consumption. I mean, when the application run any of their workload here, they must conduct the, I say, the performance testing. They, they grab every data on, uh, on their side and to actually give the train for the, how application will behave. And uh, the traffic, also they want to know more about the traffic consumption running on your platform. So after you get here, you probably could find a great partner so that you can do something together with the application team. And if you got such good application partner, then probably it's, it's a bit, little bit chance for you to work together with your application partner to, to get better performance data, let's say the better performance optimization from the overall system perspective. The top is a command line you can use to grab all the information, how your guest virtual machine is running and how your uh, host machine behave, and all the state command line. The ETH tool is really a tooling to help you understand the, I mean, the internet interface data, so what's uh, less than the NUMA bus, NUMA information for, around the, your, uh, for about your physical new card. And also, LibWord offers some API to help you understand more about your guest VM behavior. And there's a tooling, I mean, all the user space Linux tooling you can use, right? Perf is really very, I mean, important tooling is, I mean, Perf itself could give you a, a whole holistic view about how guest VM behavior uh, from the uh, user space to the kernel space. And all the event will help you understand more about the application, about, uh, about the application nature. And the NetFlow is another tool you can kind of understand more about the application traffic pattern. And sometimes it's, it's not just application running here, it's really a, a overall system interact with each other. So you can, uh, with, a, with a NetFlow, you can understand more about how the application interact be, uh, with each other from the traffic pattern perspective. Then after you understand all those uh, application uh, uh, characteristics, all the guest VM characteristics, now it, it turns to the point is you probably you know, have a way to find out what's a bottleneck in the overall system. So maybe it's a packet loss. And maybe, I mean, the, there's a hypervisor overhead. And maybe it's low routing throughput. I mean, sometimes maybe it's a CPU load or the IRQ distribution. Or let's say the bigger than the particular guest VM is a VM resource allocation and scheduling problem. But it's not, I mean, remember, sometimes it's not that straightforward to find out the bottleneck, actually. I mean, think about the scenario is your application partner complain, hi, my guest VM is running very low here. Can you tell me why? Then, I mean, it's turned out to be you, like called provider or called administrator, jump into the box. I say, then first take a CPU, yeah, it's pretty normal. And how about the disk I go, uh, disk I, oh, it's not very high. And how about the network performance? It's normal. And memory, uh, oh, not so much about, you know, page faults. So, but it's, like I mentioned, it's not that straightforward to find out the, what the real bottleneck might be. Think about, I mean, the CPU. If the CPU, I mean, yes, the CPU workload is really normal, but sometimes the guest CPU, they are just waiting for some logical resources, not physical resources. Maybe some log in the inode, right? Maybe some, let's say, some, some IPC semifer to change the value. The guest VM maybe just wait for that. And think about the disk I.O., right? So the disk I.O. is, yeah, yeah, it's normal, it's not very, uh, very high. But, I mean, every time when the user data be right into the real disk, it has to be go through the kernel buffer. It might be certain chain that the kernel won't allocate a buffer, but it certainly failed, right? And let's take a look at the memory. Yes, there is no so much page fault in your system. But when the guests, I mean, they always use their virtual memory space, right? But when, when, when the kernel wants to allocate another a certain set of virtual memory, it certainly failed, 
of application logic might be they just wait. They decide, all right, they detect a failure, and they decide, how about I just wait for a couple of minutes and then try again, right? That might be the reason to slow down the overall gas system. And the network, right? Yes, the network traffic is pretty normal. It's, it's not something, I mean, we, we could kind of like, you know, we need to spend time. But think about your gas VM is not the only thing to consume your network bandwidth. There might be another system inside your compute host consume the network a lot, right? Every time when the packet in and out from your system, it will, it will I mean, introduce a hardware interrupt. And the interrupt will introduce the overhead in your overall operating system, which will, I mean, eventually slow down your gas VM. That might, might be the reason. So remember, it's not that straightforward to find out the root cause. You have to put a lot of techniques there to find out what the real bottleneck might be. After you find the bottleneck, then probably you turn out to be the time for you to fine tune your system. Uh, let's maybe start from the hyper -threading. Yeah, so the hyper threading offers you some capabilities to, let's say, well, increase your overall system throughput, right? But it's really, I mean, the performance gain or the throughput gain is really that, not that obvious for some CPU incentive applications or CPU incentive job. For example, every of the NFA workload, right? So if your application nature is really, I mean, very care about the throughput, then probably it's good for you to turn on that. But if your application is really care about the, I say the job start time to finish time, how much time it will, it will going to spend in order to complete their job, it's not a good idea to turn on the hyper thread. You must give the, I mean the application or the gas VM fully functionality. So uh, that's a hyper threading. So another one is CPU affinity and IO NUMA. So basically, I mean, from the, let's say, if you want to offer more capabilities to the gas VM, then probably the, the good way to think about is how to give application or how to give gas VM a predictable behavior. Uh, that way, where the CPU FNT and IO NUMA coming, uh, jumping to the picture. So basically, if you find out there is some applications who is really, I mean, so who is really care about how your gas with CPU behave, it's probably a good idea to give to let all those workloads dedicated running on particular CPUs, right? And the IO NUMA is if some of the application, let's say some of the workload is really doing some IO incentive uh, stuff, right? It's probably a good idea for you to find out what's exactly physical NIC card running on any of the NUMA nodes and let the NUMA node just stick with those physical need card in order to achieve the, that performance. And the task scheduling, yes, Linux offers some functionalities for you to fine tune those uh, task scheduling. If you understand how your application are going to behave, if you want to eliminate the contact switch between different applications scheduling the, the task, you probably want to you know, give the better value for this task scheduling uh, uh, configurations and IRQ affinity. Yes, that's probably another one. Is I mean, it's uh, the by default the system will turn on the IRQ is kind of like the let the interrupt be distributed among different uh, CPU cores, especially under the multi-core system. But remember, if any of your guest VM, if, if the C virtual CPU core which is running your VM have certain chance have certain chance to be interrupted by those software IRQ. So that probably not good idea for you to let it turn on by default if you really want to achieve the performance level you want to achieve. So and also the number of uh, queues and the the queue length is really parameter for you to find to you your your applications if the application really care about the let's say the network throughput. And the uh, transparent field page. Yeah, it's very interesting. I mean, the, the Linux system is really want to do a lot of things for you, actually, collecting all those free pages and allocate the particular page uh, for you. But 
uh, let's say if we want to give a vacation a more predictable behavior, it's probably not a good idea for you to turn on this transparent huge page by default. And at the end, the control group, yeah, something I mean very commonly be used to kind of give a equation a certain limitation for running uh, their vote. This is a fun tune your system. Now, after you, you, you've gone through the journey, you find out you know, the application characteristic for your, I mean, for any of the workload, then you have the good relationship with your application dev office owner. I say, how about we work together to achieve better performance? And uh, after that, you find out some bottleneck for them. I mean, some of them may be some tricky bug inside the application itself. Then if you find that, they probably give you some additional credit from the cloud provider perspective. So not every cloud provider will help application to find those bugs. Then it turned out to be the point you probably want to integrate with all those techno technologies inside the application, inside the cloud you are offering today itself. So basically, how we start? We start from Horizon. So we offer some functionalities in Horizon. Is let's say my application partner won't detect their performance not only on their side, but also won't detect is there any way to help them running better in the cloud. Then we kind of like embedded the functionality into the NOAA client and also NOAA API using the NOAA extension framework and maintain the persistent data into the database. And down to detail, there is a performance evaluation or performance analysis API together with, the, I say, the self-tuning API inside the hypervisor itself. So this, this GUI may give you some idea about how it looks like. So basically, there is a drop-down list there. So called start performance analysis. I say I'm an application owner. I'm an application dev office owner. I'm ready to testing my performance. I really care how my application will behave under the certain projected workload. And my product manager tells me I need run better. Now, after the colleague, the performance analysis, what's going to happen is, all right, they are doing their performance for sure, but there's an API there for them to call. I say, not only me, but also you as a cloud provider. How about you invite the system? You come out with some tuning, I mean, suggestions. I mean, some of them I can do that, but some of them only you can do that. So, and the idea is, after, I mean, they done some certain period, period time, they done the overall performance evaluation, and they pop up some report like, you know, how the guest VM behave under, I mean, during the performance testing time frame, right? And there's a tool, so it's called open source, this tool is called Perfvis. It really give you a way to virtualize all those, I mean, perfect ones. And after you get all those perfect ones, you can understand all right, this is, I mean, the, I say the KVM exists, how the KVM exists from the guest the user mode to the guest the kernel mode, and for whatever reason, why they do the context switch. So basically, all those information you can get. And after you get all those informations, it's really back to cloud administrator's job to come out of fine tuning suggestions inside the overall system to have the application running better than any other cloud. Let's imagine any other public cloud vendor cannot do certain things for just your application. Some of the time we're just worrying about you know, whether my, my application will got impact by all those chaos members, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I mean, public cloud do offer some flavor for me, but I can, I'm not 100% sure whether the instance I got, the VM spec I got is really just that. It's really just reflect what I really got from the, I mean, during my instant running phase. But with that, with all those tuning technologies, we actually could offer guest VM a way of dynamically tuning all those systems, right? At the end, what we want to achieve is really a right balance 
from, I mean, between investment and the outcome, right? We do have, we just have certain amount of servers, but how we enable more to the application, this is really one thing we can think about as a cloud provider. So the reporting let you think out what's happened for this gas volume. So at the end, we start from a very messy room. So they just put everything together just like public cloud. Even public cloud have some VM flavor, all the availability zones to help to, I mean, to certain point of time or to some extent give you some capability to well organize your stuff. But it's still messy. It's still non guarantee for the for 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 the resources. And people love to be organized. People love to be tidy. I, mean, I, I love to live in a tiny room. It's just like after we did some, some performance evaluation, not only on the VM, guest VM space, but also from the cloud provider perspective, we let things run more organized. Even VM still VM. Even there is a VM placement filter inside the OpenStack platform could offer us some, le I mean, some level of the I mean, well-organized cloud. But I mean, I'm thinking this, is, this should not be enough. We can actually do more beyond just the VM placement flavor, VM placement filter. So basically, from messy room to a tidy room, this is what we are achieving. So. Yeah, I think that, that, that's it for today's call. So uh, is there any questions we can talk? No? So good thing or bad thing, I don't know. But <laughs> since there is a book there, right? there's a book in the first floor, so people maybe. Yeah. All right, if that's it, then. Thanks, thanks for coming, thank you.